Hi, uh, I am Mark Chen. This is Melissa Peterson. Welcome to our lovely chat here. We have been playing this game called Gloomhaven for the for a little bit more than a year now during the pandemic. And um, we decided to talk about it and uh, submit this video to the Well Play Journal of special COVID-19 issue. Um, and so that's what this is. Uh, um, I'm basically a professor at University of Washington Bothell, uh, which is a sister campus to um, to the one in Seattle, and um, um, you know I've been studying games for like I don't know 15 years or something like that, um, and we've been playing this game <laughs> as a way to cope with life, I guess. Um, and Melissa, would you like to talk a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so um, as Mark said, I'm Melissa Peterson. I am a PhD student in the Learning Design and Technology Department at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And um, I also have been studying games and uh, designing and developing games as well for the past uh, about a decade, uh, something like that. Um, and um, especially using these games in like museums and zoos and things like that. So um, exciting science games. Um, and yeah, we started playing, actually, I think we started playing right around when things started happening. So we had actually planned to do this before COVID uh, was really um, in the news. It was like starting to be in the news, but not really yet. Um, and we had both been talking about the fact that we didn't have people to play Gloomhaven with. <laughs> right. And since I'm in the middle of the ocean, I can't you know, just drive down to Mark's house and play Gloomhaven with him. So, right. We just well, and we've never, it. we've never lived in the same city anyway. So, no, we have it. <laughs> I don't know what would have been worse. I mean, was it easier that you were in Hawaii or would it have been easier when you were in Pennsylvania? <laughs> um, I mean, it was, it's a three hour time difference either way because when I was in Pennsylvania, I was just three hours ahead of you. Um, so now I'm just three hours behind. Sometimes yeah. only two hours though. So that's the difference is that sometimes it's only a two hour difference. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, I didn't really have people to play with in Pennsylvania either. So mm -hmm. we just decided to, we both were interested in playing. So we decided to do it. Yeah. So this game Gloomhaven um, um, got really, really big in 2019. Uh, like there was a Kickstarter and everything um, that was pretty successful or I guess I should say like wildly successful. And then, <laughs> and then um, it became like the number one game on Board Game Geek for a while. And a whole bunch of people were talking about it and, and playing it and everything. And um, so both of us, I guess, sort of jumped on the, on the hype train, um, but didn't have anyone to play with locally. <laughs> uh, and, so, and so we decided to get together and, and, and play it and everything. Since then, so last year they started, there's a digital version now. Um, which is currently in, I guess, alpha or beta or something like that. And uh, eventually we might be able to play the digital version. But anyways, the game, um, I don't know. Should we talk about how the game works? A little. I, I don't know that we need to go into great detail um, because I feel like most people probably know what Gloomhaven is. Even people who don't, who aren't really into tabletop RPGs, probably tabletop role-playing games. Um, so it's a tabletop role-playing game and it is, I would say probably the closest to playing a computer role-playing game on a tabletop that I've seen. I know that there's tons of games out there that I have not played. So I'm, you know, grain of salt mm -hmm. there. Um, but the, the way that it, the way that it works, it's like a dungeon crawler um, where you and your your group are exploring this these dungeons as part of like being in this larger narrative about what's going on in Gloomhaven. And um, one of the parts that's really interesting for me is the way the um, the monsters work. So the monsters have like legitimate artificial intelligence kinds of things going on with them so that they act so you don't need a DM. The DM doesn't handle it. The, the game actually handles it for you. It's actually a really interestingly designed uh, thing. I know it's not the first to do things like that, but it certainly does it quite well, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so so as Melissa said, it's a, it's a dungeon crawler. Um, 
um, there have been a bunch of dungeon crawlers before it, like uh, Hero Quest, um, you know, um, Descent, and and other games like that. Um, and the one that this one strikes me resembling, I guess, is the there's dun- there's a series of Dungeons and Dragons dungeon crawler games um, in these big square boxes, um, like Castle Ravenloft, I think, was the first one, and then. And then there was like Wrath of Astartalon and, and, and so on. Um, and they also have monster AI or, you know, there's like, there's basically the rules for what the monsters, what monster behavior would be. Um, to me, what makes Gloomhaven stand out from previous games is how um, your actions are sort of dictated by a hand of cards that you have. And so you have to choose um two cards to play each turn and um the cards that you choose determine uh your initiative or you know how fast or you know when when you get to go during a turn um like you compare initiative uh values and whoever has the lowest goes first um and then the cards also sort of determine or or they constrain like what you can do because you um unlike uh a lot of the other games um you can't just do anything each turn, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, that, not, um, it's not as creative as playing traditional Dungeons & Dragons, for sure. <laughs> that's true, yeah. Um, but it is, I think it's, or it's not, it's not as, as uh, freeform as traditional D&D, freeform. but I think it is that's as creative, because, like, the constraints make you come up with creative solutions, you know? Um, that's true. But you can't just turn into an Allosaurus and like walk out carrying a, a carpet. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do things like that. <laughs> that's yes, that's absolutely true. Um, <laughs> uh, that's like a deep cut. No one's gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay though, because people who play D and D, I'm sure, all have stories that are similar to that. You know, they must. Yeah. Otherwise, why are they playing D and D? Um, right. But anyways, each, each player controls a character and you can level up and everything as you're, as you're going into these dungeons and all that, get experience points and all that. And eventually the characters retire. Um, and then you can basically choose new characters to play. And that's another thing that's sort of interesting about this game is it's one of these, uh, what's called a legacy game, which means that, um, it remembers like the you you affect the the map by going in, into these different missions and everything and unlocking different areas and um, you sort of affect the um, rank or prosperity I guess of the city that you're in Gloomhaven mm-hmm. um, and uh, so so it's just like this persistent world so part of it is not isn't just like leveling up these characters which I which is really you know fun and a staple of role-playing games, but also you're sort of like leveling up the actual world that you're in too, um, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And um, you definitely can change the city for the better or the worse, depending on the decisions that you make, which is yeah. cool. All right, so so hopefully that's a good introduction to Google Event. Um, we'll put links, I guess, to <laughs> where you can find way more info in the description of this video and everything. Um, we've prepared a series of questions to ask each other um, related specifically, I guess, to playing the game during the pandemic <laughs> and that whole experience and everything. And I keep laughing about that because it's just like, um, it feels like an eternity. <laughs> and so like really trying to encapsulate everything. Um, so what, what's the first <laughs> question here? The first question is, how did this experiment begin? Which we sort of talked about already, that we had talked to each other about it. Um, I actually bought the game so that we could play Gloomhaven together um, because I didn't feel like it was worth the money if I didn't have somebody to play with because as you may or may not know, it's a hugely expensive game because it's a giant box full of tons of stuff. Like it's totally worth what you pay for it, but it is hugely expensive. So, um, so I actually bought it so that we could play together um, and I live in a house that has very few people who will play games with me, so, as in zero, um, so, or are too young to play these kinds of games, so uh, it was, it seemed like a good, a good idea at the time to 
deal with the fact that we didn't have anyone to play with by playing over Zoom. Yeah, I I actually kickstarted the game. Um, so I must have heard about the game like in 2017 or 2018 or something like that. Then I received the game, um, you know, like a month before retail stores did, and then didn't play the game for a year. <laughs> <laughs> because like I guess this was this must have been 2019 or so 2018 2019 and like um there was just too much stuff going on in my life so I didn't even, I didn't play the game and I didn't have a, a group to play with anyways or I guess I did technically but um at the time we were playing uh Pandemic Legacy instead um and so we were <laughs> bad, <game>. timing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. bad timing I know bad timing <laughs> it I don't think playing Pandemic Legacy prepared me for the real pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. There was nothing there was no um there's no toilet paper hoarding in <laughs> Pandemic Legacy. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, so so I so I had it sitting on my bookshelf for a long time. Um and I guess I must have I don't know if I told you about it or if you heard about it, but then somehow we found out that I own it and you did it. And then you're, I was like, oh, or we could, you could get it and then we could play it together. That'd be cool. Um, so, so here's the, the second question. Um, how did the use of technology evolve in terms of how, like, how did we actually play it together? Um, mm -hmm. but us, each of us having a copy of it allowed us to do um, sort of a syncing of our own version of it in front of ourselves on our own tables um, pretty easily. Like, I feel like if we, if each of us didn't have our own copy, it would have been really hard to play um, over Zoom. Yeah. So we've been playing over Zoom. Yeah, it was, um, at the time I thought maybe we would just use yours and that I would just kind of like peer in from Zoom. But after um, getting it and, and, um, I figured I could use mine as like a reference and also I like stuff, you know, who doesn't like stuff. So I remember though, the first, the first scenario we set up and I was just, there was no way we could have done it if, because Mark would have had to like hold up my cards for me. And then I would have had to have been like, no, you're other right. You know, like <laughs> kind of a thing over Zoom. No, I want to move that way. You know, um, it works out really nicely because we can pull up, you know, yeah, we sync, we sync the two versions. So I keep my video so that you can see me and also what I'm doing. And that helps both of us, I think. And then Mark has several cameras going at all times. so that we can Yeah, yeah. You know, initially, when we had this idea, we could just have our zoom cameras um, pointing at like the table and ourselves and we're just both playing together, right. Um, but then I was like, well, I actually have, I do have multiple cameras and everything. And so um, and I have multiple devices, right? So then I could set it up so that one camera would be on me, one camera would be on the the uh, the table, um, and then and I think we did that a couple of times or so. And then um, um, it turns out that there's a whole bunch of apps for this game or to support mm -hmm. playing the game, I guess. And so um, I looked into that and um, decided that. Um, it would be good to use an app while playing the game too, and then and then and basically have a um, a, a third <laughs> device connected to Zoom that's just showing what's on the app screen, or basically on my phone. And so to do that, I had to get like uh, phone mirroring software, um, you know, and run uh, Open Broadcaster Studio uh, to basically capture the the screen share of the phone on the laptop and then have that be piped into Zoom. Um, I think initially the, the actual instigation of that is that we were dealing with, like when it was just me and the tabletop, that was three videos, which made a really awkward Zoom video because you had like, it doesn't fit into a rectangle very well with three source videos. And so I was like, we need a fourth video. And so, and so, um, and so that's why, um, or that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do like this uh, screen screen share video. 
Um, yeah, it was that. And then the other thing was so that you didn't have to like stop and do the monster thing and hold up the card. It was like this whole process to get through a turn. And so once we found that app that will pull the cards for you, the like um, monster initiative cards and things like that, and um, the modifier deck, uh, it was way easier to just let that do that. And that way we didn't have to read things to the to the screen right right and also when when we had to do um so when you play the game um between missions you hang out in the city of gloomhaven and um before you go off to your next mission you're supposed to do what's called a city event so there's like this deck that has a bunch of um cards in it that each of them is a different event that happens and it's kind of like a choose your own adventure mm -hmm. kind of deck i guess um and so it was also easier just to use an app for that, um, except then it turned out <laughs> it used to be easier. <laughs> now I guess it's still easier, but not as easy. So what happened was um, yeah. somewhere along the line, the app got updated so that the text of the cards is no longer in the app, unfortunately. Um, maybe they, they hit copyright issues or something like that. Um, and so now the all it does is just show you what card number it is, and you still have to refer to your physical deck in order to in order to um, um, read read the text and everything. But initially, it was it was pretty cool to be able to have the the copy of the cards show up on the screen too. So we didn't have to, or I guess we still read it out loud, but um, so that we didn't, um, or I guess so that the viewer could walk, could read it while while we were reading it out loud, you know. But now now they just yeah. have to listen to us. Um, sad but understandable i think it must have been a copyright issue yeah um but it's it still keeps track of which cards are in the deck right like the ones yeah, yeah, that have yeah. been taken out yeah because mm -hmm. so, some of the cards get taken away and other cards go back in the deck so there's a lot to keep track of actually right and actually as a legacy game like when the cards get taken away you're supposed to like literally you're supposed to tear it up and throw it away <laughs> So that we don't do that. Yeah, do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my copy, like I haven't done anything permanent to my copy, I feel like. So like it'd be pretty easy to completely reset and start all over with my copy of the game. Yeah. I, well, I'm using the reuse. Well, I'm actually using an app now. I was using the reusable stickers and I was using an erasable pen to mark things and stuff like that. And then I found an app um, that's a campaign tracker app. So um, it's the Gloomhaven campaign tracker actually is what it's called. And um, you can, it, it'll do the map for you. It'll show like donations to the temple. It'll show everything that you could possibly want it to show. Um, it does actually have a, a thing that will run the scenarios for you, but um, the other app we were using that was, I think, free initially worked much better than that one. So I, I actually used two apps as well as the game board and <laughs> Zoom to play the game, which it gets a little crazy, but it actually, uh, the, the systems of it work out. It ends up being less crazy than if I, I was trying to do it all with cards. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it saves table space too. I don't think my table is big enough for everything. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's a tech, um, I'm pretty happy with how it's going now. I mean, we, we basically have fallen into a, a routine or at least I've fallen into a routine of setting it up, you know, so like I join with basically three devices to the same zoom room, um, um, you know, and have, have it all set up and ready to go usually by, well, <laughs> not usually by the time we actually are meeting. Cause a, a lot of, a lot of our videos, um, start when we're still setting up you mm -hmm. know um because of life <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah so that that's but it's been pretty smooth in terms of the tech there was one one time that one time i don't remember which month it was when the like the apps failed or the screen share i think failed and so we had to revert to using the cards yeah um, and we've had sound issues off and on because of all of the tech required. So if the wrong microphone is on, all of a sudden you get like these crazy alien noises, which whoa, whoa, aliens are whoa, whoa, not, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> aliens are not in the game. So it doesn't help. We did try, we tried to do um, an ambient like soundtrack one time too. And that didn't work super well because in order for it to 
be picked up by the microphone. It had to be so loud that I couldn't focus. So that didn't go very well either. But, you know, we tried. Things we tried. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of post-processing we could have been doing um, that I didn't do. <laughs> I just record to the computer and then basically just take that raw video and throw it to YouTube. But But we could have done stuff like, you know, actual edits and add a soundtrack and you know, throw it up yeah. an intro title and stuff like that. And I, I just didn't think that was worth it. Um, yeah. Yeah. There is a lot of video of the two of us making decisions, like just silently staring at our cards, trying to figure out what we're going to do next. Yeah. Yeah. So. Those parts might, <laughs> might, you know, they could have used some video editing to speed up those parts or, or do a, a fade. <laughs> Time has passed, you know, <laughs> type of fade. Yeah. <laughs> um, Actually, that kind of segues to to our fourth question, not our third question, but our fourth question. Like, why are we actually doing this? <laughs> Who's our audience? Um, <laughs> so um, our audience, it started out at zero, but then we picked up a couple of people who all happened to be named Matt. And that was the really sort of a funny thing to us, but it was only two or three of them. Um, I'm actually not sure if we ever got the third Matt or if we just referred to him, but um, it was it was strange because all, our entire audience was named Matt, and they they were actually fairly interactive at the time. They were um, giving us advice. Um, one of the Matts helped with character building because he was a very experienced Gloomhaven player, so he helped us with some of our early um, missteps with our characters. Um, but you know, for me, it's it's less. You know, the Matts were great. I'm not sure they're watching anymore. I'm pretty sure they got bored and wandered off because, you know, it was fairly sporadic. But I feel like it's a, it's a really nice um, sort of, I'm trying to think of the right word for it. It's, it's like a, an interesting historical artifact, I guess. Like, here are these two people three hours apart by, by time zone, way more than three hours apart by playing, playing this game in the middle of a pandemic. So even if nobody's going to watch it, I think it's an interesting, I think it's an interesting thing for, you know, the future archaeologists to find and be like, what were these crazy people doing? <laughs> right. Yeah. I like, yeah. Each, each video has like probably about a fewer than a dozen views. Um, and, you know, two of those are probably me because I'm like <laughs> the video and making sure it was okay and everything. Although maybe YouTube doesn't count those. Um, one of the masks, so the Matt who was helping us um, is actually a high school friend of mine like we, we've known each other since high school um cool. which was kind of interesting because because uh over the years we had not been keeping in touch at all and i wouldn't say we were like the best of friends in high school either but um you know um we knew each other at least in high school and were friends enough that we were facebook friends and so that's how he found out about it because i every time um i upload a video i would post it also to facebook and my twitter account um and so he, you know, he saw that and um, he's actually, he's, uh, I believe he's a teacher in New York. Um, mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool because, um, you know, both Melissa and I are in education as well. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened to the two mats. Uh, I'm guessing, you know, life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you know, who knows, right? We, we've had this, we've had this pandemic for more than a year. Um, who knows what what may have happened? I hope I hope nothing bad has happened to them. But um, um, yeah, it was pretty cool having their uh, help at, at initially. Also, especially at the beginning, it was it was very useful because um, we got advice on how to do character builds and how to pick characters and everything, um, and um, sort of found out about early resources. Um, there's there's a pretty healthy community online that that talks about Gloomhaven and strategies for playing Gloomhaven and everything. And I don't think I would have, um, or I guess I would have, I may have discovered those eventually, but I don't think I, um, I would have like zeroed in on the most useful ones really, um, without, without their help. So that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was cool. Cause it is quite a, a dense game to pick up just, from scratch. Um, that was actually one of our initial ideas is that we were going to try to, we were just going to be complete like uh, neophytes, I guess, and and just try from square one on video to document the learning process. And, 
and we ended up needing help because it's it's really and i i say this in our last the last video we just shot i'm still looking stuff up it's now been a year we've been playing for a year we pretty much know you know like we, there's not a lot of looking up anymore but every once in a while we're like wait what is that rule again we have to go back and look it up mm -hmm. in yeah. the, in the giant rule book yeah and that's why i'm sort of looking forward to the to the digital version because then it'll keep track of all that stuff for us enforce the rules for us you know um yes although this does bring us to our fifth question which is about our priorities during the game experience because we um uh We've been known to cheat a little bit uh, <laughs> to preserve the fun. So um, it is a hard game and we were very faily at it for a while. <laughs> um, we didn't pick the best characters necessarily. We just picked based on how we would normally play in other RPGs and not it doesn't always work that well to do that. So we picked and we picked like super squishy characters that were not very good at what they did right away. It took us a little while to get going. Mm -hmm. So we definitely have, we're not, we're not playing like super epic hard level or anything like that. We play easy pretty much all the time. And every once in a while we accidentally cheat. <laughs> every once or, well, okay. So, so first I fully believe we should be allowed to play whatever character we want to play. Right. And, um, that said, it is definitely true that some combinations of characters uh, allow for um, more robust, I guess, strategies than other combinations. And we did choose a particularly weak combination of characters initially. Um, but I, you know, we were having fun and that's probably what matters the most. Um, and just learning, you know, learning, learning how to play and all that stuff. And, and all that stuff was fun. Um, or fun is learning, right? So, um, you know, I maintain that we may not have been sort of min-maxing the game, but we were definitely, I think, playing the game how it was meant to be played, which is basically just to have fun with the game. And so, like, with each group of players, how it's meant to be played is going to be different because each group of players is going to have a, sort of a different criteria for how they want to play and everything, right? Um, yeah. And then in terms of the cheating, like... <laughs> It sort of became more as we played yeah. throughout the year. Like initially, I feel like we we didn't. The only times we 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 cheated were when we um, forgot a rule or something like that. Um, yeah, or like made then, a mistake. Yeah, picking up our cards, mm -hmm. things like that. But then, like, but then uh, there were definitely a, a couple of cases where um, we realized that we made a mistake, and we sort of like. Um, we sort of, you know, rewound time a little bit and, and did that move over again. Um, and then um, the game lets you sort of set the difficulty level. Um, and so like, and it actually says like, you know, if you, if you do this mission and you fail um, or if you fail repeatedly, you can just sort of set the difficulty lower level to be lower if you want. Um, and likewise, actually you can set the difficulty level to be higher. We've never done that though, but, um, <laughs> but um, uh and so eventually at one point we're like, okay, this is actually too hard and we need to set, set it to low, be lower. And then I think um, we ended up just by, just basically keeping it at that lower level um, for the rest of the campaign that we had been playing. Um, yeah. Yeah, we reached a point where we had lost a lot and it was frustrating and it makes you not want to come back to the game when you lose a lot. And not that it's necessarily fun to win all the time either, but um, I think we reached a really nice level of like, it was diff it, it wasn't, simple to win but it, like it was it was satisfying to win because it didn't feel like it was too easy we've reached a point now where it's sort of too easy except for that we have hit what is as far as the forums are concerned like the hardest scenario and we cannot seem to get past this scenario so we're, we're debating on how to cheat to get past this one <laughs> yeah it's such a stupid it's an escort quest um and the, the... like need we say more escort quest <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, so at the very beginning of this recording, we were talking about how the game works and how the, the monsters have an AI to them. Well, this guy we're escorting also has an AI to him, and it's dumb. It's, like, super <laughs> suicidal. <laughs> it is It is a really bad AI. It's, it's like... 
it to refer to like wow which you know world of warcraft there are escort quests or at least there used to be the the escort the escorted escortees who the person you were escorting um would sometimes like stop and you could like you know fight off all the bad guys that had just swarmed around you Mm -hmm. This guy doesn't do that. He just keeps going. He like he's like, there's a guy with the sword. I'm gonna run at him, but he doesn't hit the guy with the sword. He just like runs, just keeps running. Like he's like um he's like a stupid robot. He just just straight right. forward. Yeah. Well, I mean, robot exactly. I mean, we're we're just using these algorithms, these you know these preset rules for how to how to control the characters that aren't us. <laughs> Which is basically what what we would do with a robot too. Just program, give him a program to follow. Um, yeah, but it's sad because he's his AI is not as smart as the monster AI. That's true. And so yeah. the, the monsters have like specific goals that they go for, and they're not always smart about how they get to them. But for the most part, they're pretty smart. Um, he's not smart, and he doesn't. He has a sword. He doesn't swing it. He's just. It's like a robot bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Except bunnies tend to run away from danger. <laughs> that is true. This is like a robot bunny that got its wires crossed and it like just runs at danger. <laughs> a robot walks daredevil. Through doors. Yeah. <laughs> it walks through doors. It steps on traps. It like, it, but it doesn't do anything else. That's all it is. Right. Just straightforward. A lemming, a robot lemming. Yes, that's what it is. And now I'm thinking about it's that. exactly. Like, oh, computer game lemmings. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that. It's exactly, if you haven't played lemmings, you had to actually like physically make one stop everybody else. He's like, if if <laughs> the, the lemmings could pick up that guy that stops them and get it out of the way and then jump in the lava, that's basically what this AI is. It's very sad. <laughs> <laughs> Even even my summoned thing. So I'm a summoner right now and I can summon all these things. And there's like, I have a... Um, what do I have? I've got a slime, and the slime is smarter than the this guy we're escorting. <laughs> it doesn't have a brain, but if it does have I'm a brain, a it can see through. Like you could see, you could see through his body to his brain. That's well, true. Maybe maybe the slime just doesn't have a brain. Um, mm. So now that we've been doing this for a year, um, how has it been? Like, what's the relationship that you have with the game? Um, is it, you know, has it take a particularly, particular kind of meaning because we've been playing during the pandemic or, or anything like that or what? Um, I mean, I think, I don't, I haven't thought about it too hard to like that we started this and the pandemic happened at the same time. Like it kind of, it was sort of a coincidence, like we talked about before. Um, but I would say that it's definitely... Um, I'm glad that we had already decided to do it because I felt like it just sort of naturally flowed and it definitely, um, it's definitely something I look forward to when we've had to cancel. It's, I'm sad because, you know, I get to play a game with my friend and we, um, we may not always be successful, but at least like I'm spending some time doing something I enjoy, which I know that a lot of people are struggling with that during the pandemic, um, trying to figure out ways to do the things that they enjoy. I'm an introvert, so that hasn't been a humongous problem for me because I can always just read a book, right? But um, it definitely, you know, having that human connection with somebody else that's not in my house is is pretty, I think it's pretty nice to have. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of like, if we if we weren't doing this, what, 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 what do I normally do? I guess I'm normally playing like a video game of some sort or reading or like just watching stuff, right? And the video game stuff can be social if I'm playing an online game, but um in 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 pre-covid times i used to go to a weekly board game meetup um a neighborhood meetup and so you know i haven't been able to do that for more than a year um so this has been pretty valuable for me um because i you know i used to play a lot of board games i have a lot of board games but like none of them have seen the table for over a year now right it's just it's just this one game really well, and, and Pandemic. I played Pandemic with Moses and David um, <laughs> for another well-played issue. Um, but um, um, yeah, other than that, it's just been, it's just been this game. Um, yeah, and I, I, I found it very, pretty valuable. There was like, there are like, we've gone like several weeks between games sometimes. Um, 
you know, because like, you know, it's academic yeah, schedule, usually. like semester changeover <laughs> first two weeks of the semester is no go no fly mm -hmm. right right yeah. what's been interesting for me too is um because so um i have a daughter and she is in school about half time now but um she's come to a lot of the gloomhaven uh plays and she's in quite a few of the videos um and she now is like totally into these sorts of games she's only eight so that makes it really hard so we've been playing jaws of the lion uh because that's a little bit easier that's like a really good intro to um these sorts of games and i would say that it's great because i know that i'm going to have somebody to play these games with down the line when she gets into strategy a little bit more uh, but at the same time it's such a different experience to be teaching somebody who's brand new to gaming how to play these sorts of games versus playing with somebody else who's been playing for a long time um, I find Jaws of the Lion way less relaxing, <laughs> but that's, that's totally because of how I'm playing. <laughs> Interesting. That's really funny. So I, I played Jaws of the Lion solo. I bought it and just played it on my own. Um, well, that was cool. Um, and I actually, I noticed one, one thing that I noticed about that is um, I was able to sort of like go through it pretty quickly, <laughs> I guess, because I didn't have to coordinate with another person. Um, and so, yeah. you know, I have sort of finished the campaign from Jaws of the Lion already um, and am, am eagerly awaiting you all to catch up so that we can uh, break out those characters and everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, it's a slow going. Um, I would say that playing Jaws of the Lion with an eight-year-old is hard mode. <laughs> <laughs> um it's not it's not that the game is all that hard but um trying to like teach her strategy and how to play the game and then also make sure we don't lose it's it's a, it's a pretty intense it's a pretty intense way to play <laughs> yeah yeah this actually reminds me of you know one of the to go back to a previous topic like one of the reasons why we were cheating i feel like is because we wanted to progress like we wanted to make sure we were making steady progress through the campaign um because it's like really really long <laughs> um yeah. like maybe too long you know <laughs> yeah and we so we've had to stop and do side quests to level up too so that makes it even longer um, and i don't i don't have a feel for how far into it we are i i can't tell if we're like halfway through or like almost done or like i have no idea um i feel like there's way more scenario book to go but I don't know if that's just because of the choices we made or what. I try really hard not to cheat in that way. So I don't like do a lot of like planning ahead for that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it definitely, I have no idea. We might be almost done, but I feel like there's no possible way that we're almost done because we've only unlocked like two extra characters and that's it. Yeah. And, and the game, there's like more, 12, right? there's like a dozen characters or something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is true. There are a lot more characters but I feel like the story itself must be coming towards an end or something because like we've, we've done so much. I mean, <laughs> you want to like the really, really brief recap um, for people who have no idea what we're talking about, but basically like Gloomhaven is set in this fantasy world and there's like this something weird going on called the gloom. Um, and we're just these adventurers and everything. And we find out that, um, there's these cultists who are sort of like encouraging, I guess, the gloom to spread or whatever. Um, and they summon undead and stuff like that. And we, we sort of track them down and we get hired by somebody to do all this. It turns out that she um, <laughs> was sort of like a mastermind behind, behind some of it and everything. And so she's actually um, um, turns on us or we turn on her, I guess, technically, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but she's a bad guy. Uh, and, yeah. and, um, um, you know, we deal with her and then that leads to a bunch of other stuff. And then, and then there's like these, um, there's like these portals to like another dimension or like a dark plane type of dimension thing that we have to like, we we have to find and then close, um, and deal with and all that stuff. And we did that. And that was done through the help of like recruiting like this, uh, just, uh, enchantress to help us. Hale named Hale, who's like, <laughs> pain of the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've been doing a lot that I feel like if this was like a um like a TV show or a movie um if it was a movie we would we would be on like the third movie by now or something like that you know 
Um, Easily, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If this was a TV show, we would probably probably be in like the second or third season by now, I feel like, you know? And so yeah. I feel like we've done quite a lot and I can't imagine it getting like having more, but you're absolutely right. We we've we barely touched the characters that are in the game. Yeah. And I don't think um I don't think that they um the unlocks are they take a while to unlock the next character because you have to, most of them are from retirement. So we unlocked yeah. two and immediately started playing as those two. And now I don't know, like, I don't know what's going to happen next. My current, my current retirement re requirement <laughs> is like, uh, it's, it's inevitable. So it's, it's unavoidable, but it's going to take forever. <laughs> Mine is similar because mine requires, uh, yeah, a lot of looting, let's say. It's going to require a lot of looting. And I'm actually not sure that my retirement requirement is unlocking anything new, to be perfectly honest. So that's going to make life even harder because, well, not harder, but we just won't get anything cool out of it. Stupid retirement. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can move on to a new character at least. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what unlocks, if anything else unlocks. I don't know. Or maybe I'll just hurry through Jaws of the Lion and use one of those characters instead. Because mm -hmm. those are pretty interesting characters. Yeah. I like the Crusher yeah. guy. I don't, I don't know what he's called. Is he called a Crusher? I don't think so. The what? The um, Quattrio? He can go and like destroy rubble and stuff. Destroy objects and stuff. That's the one I play as. He's like a... Um, a demolitionist or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. He's pretty cool. Yeah, that's the one I play as. Um, you know me. I like to, you know, play the weird characters. <laughs> I'm never like, I want to be a barbarian. I'm always like, I want to multi-class as <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Actually, one thing we might consider uh, is to each of us control two characters. Just so that we unlock them f faster. I mean, just so that we we get to see them faster. You know what I mean? That's Cause true. Because if we were if we were playing this, so this game goes up to four four players. And so if we were actually had been playing this whole year with four people, we would be we'd you know we would have seen eight characters yeah. by now. So maybe maybe that's why we haven't seen the character enough characters. Yeah, you know, that's because we're that's playing true. with two people. That will up the number of bad guys though by like a lot. Yeah. And I wonder if that's going to make it a lot of a, a lot longer of a campaign too, because or at least like each scenario will take longer because we're having to control two. I don't know. I have no basis for this opinion except for just that there will be way more bad guys. What if we but try this, each of us controlling two characters for this one scenario that we're currently on, the stupid escort quest? That's not a bad idea. Although I have to make sure that I pick a character that I actually have the the standee for since the dog ate them. <laughs> so another anecdotal thing, which you may or may not want to keep in the recording, is that um, my dog ate two, <laughs> our two characters. <laughs> so I'm having to use the wrong characters, the, the wrong standees for our characters because the dog climbed up onto a table and then fished them out and ate them. <laughs> wow. He really wanted to eat them. I hope they were really tasty. <laughs> I guess dogs eat anything. <laughs> they kind of do. This one does. This one eats anything. But yeah. <laughs> it's been an interesting year. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> my dog so my character. what's the last question we should we should be asking ourselves? We've we've gone through our list of questions, but I feel like we need a concluding question. Like, how do you envision this ending? Or what do you plan next? Or something like that. Well, I don't know. I have Forbidden Circle, so we could just roll right into Forbidden Circle at the end of this if you got it too, and then it wouldn't have to end. But I also kickstarted Frost Haven, so we could also just roll into Frost Haven. I would have to buy a <laughs> copy. Um. Well, yeah, I, I, we'll see. Um, I'm not sure. Well, it will depend on where I am in my whole doctoral program process and how things are going. I don't want to give it up though so i guess that's my my end result is that i would like to just keep playing um if it wasn't clear um even though we've been sporadic about it i i 
like I said, I look forward to it. It's nice to have that like social interaction time and getting to play a more serious game than I might normally. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Maybe well, so we'll one question else. is, yeah. So that's the question. Do we want to keep playing Gloomhaven or, you know, it's sequel or do we want to like switch up to a different game? Um, Cause that's doable too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, either way, I think that we've, we've shown that this, this paradigm works. It may not be ideal, but we've, we've made it work. And I think that that's, um, I see a, a lot of people complaining online because they're trying to do like tabletop simulator or they're, you know, they're, they're trying to use the tech as the game in a lot of ways. And I think that we've kind of smashed that and figured out ways around it. Um, that said, yeah. we still need two copies of whatever game we're going to play. Right. So I guess, I mean, that's an interesting topic too. So why aren't we using tabletop simulator? I and mean, I feel like, you know, what you're saying is true. Like for, for me, there's something about actually picking pieces up and moving them around and everything that, that you can't really recreate in a, in one of these um, simulations. I mean, even I say that, but I already said earlier that I'm looking forward to the digital version of this game. So like, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how that compares and everything. Yeah. Well, I feel like um, because of the way we're doing things, it's more social interaction. If we're even if we put up Zoom on one side and then we were playing on the other side, um, so like say we have two monitors going or something like that, I feel like we're necessarily going to spend less time talking to each other because we each have our own interface that we're interacting with, even if we're talking to each other over Zoom. Whereas when we're looking at you know sometimes not properly synced physical items we're we're talking about oh where did you put that guy oh yeah okay i see you know there's there's more of that there's more communication going on i think mm. again we haven't tried it but the, there's something about needing to make sure that neither of us have made mistakes on our syncing up that makes it a little more of a social thing than if we were just playing online yeah yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but I think that's true. Um, but at the same time, so we wouldn't be able, this this game is actually, so Gloomhaven is, is um, because it's cooperative and because there's not a lot of like hidden information, um, at least not randomized hidden information, it, it works really well. Um, if we were playing like Burgle Brothers, for instance, that has hidden information and there's no way we would be able to sync our boards without knowing that hidden information. So um, this definitely uh, worked well because we picked well. Mm -hmm. If we had tried some of the other games out there, we might not have done as well. Right. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, well, maybe we'll just stick with this then. I mean, I'm, I guess I could just buy Frosthaven when it comes out. <laughs> it's still, uh, it's still not out yet, quite yet, right? Right. They're planning to. They just sent out a thing. I think that the first round of, of, they're still working on the the scenario booklet and things like that. I think that the summer is when they're planning for it to come out. Okay. But don't quote me on that because I don't remember. Okay. Off the top of my head. Well, who? I mean, again, who knows how far we actually are in this stupid campaign? So we'll see. Um, yeah, who knows? <laughs> Three years later, they're still playing Gloomhaven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know if I have that, that long of a campaign in me, <laughs> if it keeps going for that I long. <laughs> yeah. We'll probably be on a second, a different pandemic by then. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be COVID 2026. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess we could wrap up. It's been fun. Mm -hmm. um, and we will probably play again in a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe <laughs> next week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks for watching, listening. Uh, actually, there's one more thing I want to say is that if anyone actually is interested in playing with us, that's doable, but you may need your own copy of the game as well. <laughs> yeah, and we have two slots. We don't have a full group. There's only two of us. So we have two open slots and we're yeah. pretty friendly people. Yeah. 
we actually did this for the there's a um there's a conference that we go to called nasaga north american simulation and gaming association um and uh we actually played one of these gloomhaven sessions during that conference and invited other people to join us too but no one could because no one had a copy of the game um, yeah it didn't work out but we tried yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> well um i guess that's it i'll see you around um yeah yeah Good talking thanks everybody <laughs> for watching and listening and yes. join us next time as we try to escort this stupid robot rabbit robot yeah. lemming again and feel free to feel free to leave comments down below <laughs> oh, like i'm pointing and subscribe i'm pointing <laughs> except that um it doesn't matter because i'm just gonna use this voiceover for the video probably <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to like comment and subscribe as right. all of the youtube videos say yes um <laughs> and feel free to message us if you have questions or anything uh, okay bye bye everyone <laughs>